Today I wanted to share with you guys my thoughts regarding the free software movement and gun rights because I find a lot of similarities between the free software movement and Second Amendment supporters. One of the cornerstones of the free software movement and the open source movement as well is that you can't prevent people from using that software for whatever purposes that they choose to use that software for. So whether they use your software for quote ethical purposes or unethical purposes, it really doesn't matter. And free software and the various free licenses, they don't have any say in this. You know, to qualify as free software or open source software, you can't tell people what purpose they use your software for. They can use it for whatever purpose they want. And this is for good reason, because what exactly is ethical or unethical? Well, it depends on who you ask. It's entirely subjective. And if I license a piece of software in a way that states that the software can't be used for this purpose or that purpose or by this group of people, maybe for political reasons. You know, I don't want the military using my piece of free software or the NSA. Well, I can't license it that way. Well, I could license it that way, but that license no longer qualifies as a free license. My piece of software will no longer be considered free software or open source software if I license it in that sort of way. And I really love that the free software definition and the open source software definition protect people in such a way that they can use this software in whatever purpose they want, because I think that's very important. I think that's very important as far as people's freedom. But I see a disconnect because I've noticed that many people in the free software community tend to identify as liberals, and many of those folks are in favor of some form of gun control. Now, I understand that many people get trapped in the whole Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative, left, right dichotomy. You know, they join a team and they're going to go along with everything that their team wants. But really, I mean, when was the last time? That you met a person in real life and you agreed with 100% of everything they ever said, right? It's never happened. But when it comes to political party affiliation, well, all of a sudden, you know, people just agree with everything that their party leaders tell them. Now, I expect more from the free software community and the open source community because we wouldn't be part of these communities if we weren't afraid to go against the norm, right? Simply by being part of these communities, we're, we're kind of already identifying ourselves as nonconformists. So why are some of you guys conformist when it comes to two-party politics? If you are a believer in the free software movement, then you probably subscribe to the idea that we as humans have some basic fundamental rights that should never be infringed upon. For example, the right to privacy. Most of us that are supporters of the free software movement strongly support digital rights and digital privacy and think those to be unalienable rights, as the founding fathers of the United States would put it. In fact, the right to privacy is kind of implied in the very first amendment in the Bill of Rights. It's so important, the right to privacy, and it, that's why why it's the First Amendment. The First Amendment guarantees things like freedom of the press, freedom of religion, freedom of assembly, the freedom of expression. Rights so important that they had to be the very First Amendment. And you know what basic human right was so important that the founding fathers of the U.S. thought it needed to be the Second Amendment? The right to bear arms. And I see similarities between the kinds of freedoms that the free software movement fights for and the freedoms that the pro-Second Amendment people are out there fighting for. Because software, as we've talked about, is just a tool. And really, guns are just a tool. And having the freedom to do what we want with our software and with our guns, both are paramount to having a free society. So, software is just a tool. Guns are just a tool. How that tool is used ultimately is up to the user, right? It's up to the discretion of the user of that tool. The same thing can be said about firearms. A gun is simply a tool. It's an inanimate object. It does nothing on its own, right? It, it really can't do anything. You often hear, you know, people that support the Second Amendment say things like guns don't kill people, people kill people. And that's absolutely true because a hammer is a tool. And a hammer can kill people. <laughs> and people have used hammers in history to actually kill other people as a weapon. But I've never heard anyone suggest that hammers kill people. <laughs> no one's ever said that. So why the double standard when we talk about guns as opposed to other tools such as hammers or software? In my opinion, everyone should own a gun. Everyone that hasn't disqualified themselves in some major way. So if you're a felon, obviously, you shouldn't be able to purchase one. But every law-abiding citizen, 
should own a gun and not just one gun you should own several guns back to the tool analogy you wouldn't buy just one wrench or one screwdriver right because you have to have several different kinds of wrenches to get all the jobs done the same is kind of true for guns you need to own several different guns to have all of your bases covered so if you currently don't own a gun, my suggestion would be first, buy a 9mm handgun and learn how to use it. By far the most important reason to own a gun is for self-protection. So buy a handgun chambered in 9mm, which is the most popular handgun caliber, and start carrying it and learn to use the thing. Now when I say start carrying it, it, it will depend on your location because obviously those of us that live in free states, you know, we can conceal carry or open carry, you know, depending on whether you need a permit or not. But, you know, it's an option. But those of you that live in one of the communist states, then carrying a handgun is illegal and you're never going to get a permit. <laughs> Technically, it's possible, but they just won't issue you one. So it's next to impossible for you guys to actually carry. So my suggestion in that case is really you have two options. A, move out of that state, right? And no, I'm not kidding. Move out of that freedom-hating communist state and move to one of the free states. Or if moving really isn't an option for you, what you could do is try to remove those politicians that took your right to bear arms away. Now, after you buy a handgun, the next thing I would suggest buying is a 22 rifle. So buy a rifle chambered in 22 long rifle because it's a great survival gun. 22s are perfect for shooting small game. The ammo is really cheap. It has absolutely no recoil. It's great for practicing on how to actually use a rifle. And it's great for children as well. Next, I would start buying what I call freedom rifles. So go buy yourself an AR-15. This is sometimes dubbed America's rifle. It shoots a really nice caliber 5.56 or 2.23. So it's a 22 caliber round, right? But it's a much more powerful 22 round than the 22 long rifle. So AR-15s are actually very capable as far as hunting rifles. They'll take game up to deer sized game and it's a good self-defense round of course. And because AR-15s are so popular, maybe America's most popular rifle and they're so cheap. Nobody ever buys just one and I suggest you don't buy just one either. Buy two. Buy two, that way you can arm a friend or a family member in a hits the fan kind of situation. Another freedom rifle worth getting is, of course, the AK-47. Now, the AK shoots a bigger round. It shoots a 30 caliber bullet, but the ammo is very cheap and very plentiful. AKs come in a lot of sizes and shapes and calibers. This beauty here, this is a Russian Vepr chambered in 308. I'm very proud of this rifle here being a Russian firearm, though it is no longer something that you can get. So it really is a collectible item. And this one here is a Russian Vepr chambered in 12 gauge. Now think about that for a second. This is a semi-automatic rifle that has a 10 round magazine that fires 12 gauge. There's a reason that groups like Antifa hold their protest in the communist states rather than the free states because they wouldn't want to step on my lawn. Now, I don't like getting political on this channel because, honestly, I think that everyone that participates in the U.S. government and U.S. politics, quite frankly, they're crooked as hell. And I don't care what party they belong to. All of them crooked as hell. But it's not the politicians necessarily that disturb me. It's you guys, the people, because I see too many people willing to give up their freedoms just to go along with the current political winds. So hold to your principles, just like sticking to your principles when it comes to the free software movement and all those First Amendment rights that you love so much, such as the right to privacy. Stick to your principles when it comes to your Second Amendment rights as well. Even if you don't personally own a gun, maybe you don't like guns, maybe you live in one of the communist states, you can't even have a gun or carry a gun, right? It doesn't matter, though. Because it's not just about you, right? The right to protect oneself from things like the rioters in Oregon, those of you that live out west. Or maybe you need to protect yourself from looters after a storm. I've certainly dealt with that in my life. Or maybe you need to just protect yourself from your government. And that's a, a real situation. It has happened many times in history, including U.S. history. People have had to take arms against their government. One thing we've learned over the course of history is once you give up a right, you never get it back. So guys, no matter what, fight for this right and be prepared to defend it with your life if necessary.